do I begin to tell the story of how great a love can be? That special love that gives our mind a pair of wings, wings to the memory and creativity. Where do I start? The story I'm about to tell you today is not an ordinary love story. Rather, it is a story of a special kind of love. That special kind of love that gives wings. Wings to the human mind. Wings to the human memory, wings to the human creativity, wings to the overall human capacity. That's not the sentimental kind of love we all know, but rather a sincere, genuine love for the human being as such. In a learning process, if teachers would experience and employ this special kind of love for their students. They would empower them to achieve what most people would consider miraculous results. I call them butterfly results, because to achieve them, you need wings. Now, where do you get a pair of wings? Or how do you grow a pair of wings? And how do you help others grow a pair of wings too? Once, not too long ago, there lived a gentleman in Bulgaria, a scientist who dedicated his life to helping others grow wings. Would you like to hear his story? Yes? Get comfortable and listen on. The gentleman was Dr. Georgi Lozanov. He was a renowned psychiatrist, psychotherapist, brain researcher and educator. He studied extensively the hidden capacities of the human brain and discovered a hidden treasure chest in the human mind which contained unlimited human capacities. Most people were unaware of the existence of such a treasure within themselves though, because they had been conditioned to think. They had come to believe that their mind was limited, and so were their capabilities. However, Dr. Luzano studied the minds and brains of many different people, and he found out that this hidden treasure of superior human potential existed in everybody's mind. So you have one too. He called that treasure the hidden reserves. And he discovered that there were different kinds of reserves hidden in that treasure chest. Memory reserves, intellectual activity reserves, creativity reserves, and reserves of the whole human personality. Not only that, but he was also fascinated by the way that these different species of reserves lived together in harmony, interacted with each other and helped each other thrive. So all together they form a community of reserves, or as Dr. Lozanov named it, the reserve complex. Yet, yeah. It turned out that the reserve complex was locked in the treasure chest. So how do you unlock it? That's exactly what Dr. Lozano dedicated his life to. Once he discovered that these hidden reserves existed in every human being, he dedicated his life to helping others unlock their treasure chest and helping them tap into this enormous human potential they all had but could not yet use. He said, I've always thought that we are, metaphorically speaking, fallen angels 
blocked goals. Hypnotized souls who have come to believe in their nothingness and have put up with it. But I had a dream. And this dream persistently whispered to me, spoke, shouted, there is a method, there is a form of communication for locked gods and for hypnotized cells who have come to believe in their nothingness. There is, there is this method. This form of communication will change things. If it happens, we will all learn and develop much faster and more creatively and with joy. Then talents will not be so far from us. So Dr. Lozenov set out to create a new form of communication that would empower individuals to unlock their treasure chests, tap into their reserves and advance much faster in their learning and in their development as a whole. I would even say in their evolution. He did indeed develop such a form of communication back in the 1960s and 70s which he called Reservopedia. It is a learning method at the level of the hidden reserves of the human mind, which uses pedagogical, psychological and artistic means. It's the learning system that liberates and stimulates the enormous human potential. It's the learning system that helps you grow wings, and fly high. You may be curious to find out how that happened. Are you? Okay, I will tell you. Reservopedia uses a form of communication based on suggestion. And by suggestion we mean offering, proposing, where the individual can use their free will to make a choice. It is essential to understand that this form of suggestive communication respects and stimulates the individual's free will to make choices, to make decisions, to express their authentic views in their authentic way. As the communication is based on suggestion, Reservopedia is also known as Suggestopedia. Actually, nowadays, Suggestopedia is the more popular name for this humane learning method that helps people soar in their learning and in their development. As early as 1978, Suggestopedia was recognized by UNESCO as a superior learning method applicable to various fields of study and to various age groups. Practically what that means is that any subject could be taught or could be learned using this method and that anyone can learn using Suggestopedia. So how does it work? How do you get to soar in your learning and in your development as a human being? I could lift the curtain a bit for you. I've been using this method to teach English as a foreign language since 2013 and I appreciate it and love it more and more every day. My name is Jordanke Ivanchiva and as I'm Bulgarian myself, I'm particularly glad and truly honoured to be your guide today into the mystery of suggestopedic training and learning. So how do we unlock the treasure chest and tap into our hidden human capacity? Well, it turns out the treasure chest has seven locks each one with a different key and we need to have them all unlocked at the same time so that we can open the lid. The first lock is the biggest one and it has the biggest key and that key is love. Remember, 
Love is to be experienced as the genuine love and appreciation for the human being as such. Think of a mother or a father teaching their child how to ride a bicycle. The child cannot tell at any given moment whether the parent is holding the bicycle or not. So this is a metaphor that illustrates the kind of love we experience we employ and the kind of guidance we provide for the students. What is the role of love in unlocking the learner's hidden reserves? In Suggestopedia, in order to be able to tap into the hidden reserves, you need to get into a peculiar state of mind where your mind is relaxed, but you are fully able to concentrate and you're active. Dr. Lozano calls this state concentrative cycle relaxation. It is a state in which we feel comfortable, at ease, but at the same time vibrant, full of energy and life, and we experience states of mind close to inspiration. And love plays the main part in unlocking this special state of mind. The love that the teacher radiates brings about serenity, comfort, trust. Just like loving parents sing, dance and play with their children, so does the teacher with the students. Teacher's loving, caring and playful attitude helps create an enjoyable, cheerful and supportive atmosphere where learners feel calm, comfortable and light-hearted. Their minds are relaxed, yet they are concentrated without straining. In such a state of concentrated cycle relaxation, the rich stimuli offered with love make it possible to provoke spontaneous hypomnesia, which is actually one of the treasures of our mind. It is our superior memory that empowers us to remember things instantly and for a long period of time. Now we come to the second lock and the key to it is freedom. In suggestopedic learning, we do not oblige. We suggest, we propose, we recommend. For example, I would say, would you like to sing a song? Would you like to hear this story? Would you like to play a game? Would you like to dance? And the learners are free to participate or not in any given activity, depending on how they feel about it. If for some reason they wouldn't want to participate, they are free to observe. So in general, learners get the feeling that they are not obliged to obey some rules, but are free instead to enjoy the learning process and to express themselves in a way that is natural to them. We foster free, authentic self-expression. The third log has a most unusual but very essential key. That key is the teacher's conviction that something unusual is taking place. This unfailing conviction leads the teacher to a state of inspiration and elation. In that state, he or she radiates some fine subconscious signal of joy and extraordinary expectations through the voice 
through facial expressions, through gestures, and through overall nonverbal communication. Now, these signals are genuine. They cannot possibly be simulated. So the learners perceive them subconsciously and they trust them and they come to resonate with the teacher's joy and extraordinary expectations. And what are these expectations? First, the teacher expects that he or she is able to activate the reserve capacities of the learners. And second, that the learners are able to learn at the level of the reserves. The fourth key is manifold increased input material. Compared to traditional methodologies, in Suggestopedia, the volume of input material is increased manifold, at least two or threefold, often fivefold, and sometimes even tenfold for a given time frame. The large volume of the input material provides sufficient stimulation for the memory and also supports or reinforces the idea of the unlimited capacities of the human being. Now we come to the fifth lock and to unlock it we need a key with a bit of a long name that is global partial partial global partial through global. Here we mean the incessant connection between the part and the whole, in other words, between the partial and the global. When we talk about a language, the letters, the sounds, the words, the grammar do not exist in isolation. They are interconnected parts of that language. That's why we don't isolate them to learn them. We learn them in the context of the story, where the story is leading. In other words, we learn the partial through the global, where the global is always leading. Next, we are going to open the sixth lock with the golden proportion key. The golden proportion, or else known as the golden ratio, or the divine proportion, is a principle of organizing the elements in a whole in the most aesthetically pleasing way, in the most harmonious way. The golden proportion is the law of harmony in nature. And it's essential to be in a state of harmony to be able to acquire, to absorb the enormous learning material you're presented with. To create a harmonious suggestopedic or reservopedic communication, we apply the golden ratio to the organization of the overall learning process as well as to the organization of the learning materials. As a result, learning feels light and easy and learners don't get tired in the process. On the contrary, at the end of a day's session, they normally feel rested and in high spirit. The golden proportion is widely present in classical art, which explains why classical works have such a harmonizing effect on us. And actually, we have come to the last key. The use of classical art and aesthetics that's going to help us open the last lock and open the lid of the treasure chest holding our reserve capacities, our hidden potential. Suggestopedia or Reservopedia uses specially selected works of classical art such as music pieces, songs, arias, literary excerpts, reproductions of masterpieces and so on. We integrate art into the entire learning process. Actually, everything you come into contact with in the learning process feels like art. In fact, the entire suggestopedic learning process is in itself a form of art.